And hello everyone and welcome to the final session of today's event. Um, I saved the best to last obviously. Um, today I've got with me Dexter from uh, the Apprentice Voice and also the Apprentice, it's the Apprentice Voice and... And Apprentice Talks, yeah. Uh, Apprentice Talks, that's it, sorry. Slipped my mind there. Uh, Dexter's been running this uh, voluntarily with his colleagues Katie and Neve who unfortunately can't be here today, um, but Dexter's stepping in. So Dexter, over to you, mate. Tell us all about it. Brilliant. Thank you, Sim. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I feel like I've been hard done by here following on from that brilliant discussion. So uh, I'll do my best to keep it lively and uh, keep to the 15 minutes. Um, so a little bit about myself. I'm Dexter Hutchins and I'm a level six digital marketing apprentice. So I work for the Edge Foundation, which is an education charity. Um, I started there almost four years ago now, um, and it's literally flown by. So I started there as a level three marketing apprentice. Um, and then I took kind of a year out working there full time before I decided I kind of wanted to learn a little bit more. Um, so that's when I then pushed myself to go to university and get my degree. Um, it's an opportunity that I never thought I would actually have. So um, I never really got on that well at school. Um, and when I joined the Edge Foundation, that completely changed for me. Um, so putting the learning into perspective at the workplace kind of just changed my whole outlook on learning um, and I actually now really enjoy kind of learning and actually I'm always trying to push myself to learn more where I can. Um, so a little bit about The Apprentice Voice. Uh, we founded back in 2019 um, and it's myself, uh, Katie and Neve. We are all apprentices. Um, so Katie and Neve work at Pearson um, and like I said, I'm at the Edge Foundation. We actually met at an event which was about apprenticeships in the House of Commons and we were talking to Gillian Keegan, um, who wasn't skills minister back then, um, but she was an apprentice ambassador. And we were talking to her about some of the problems we faced during kind of our apprenticeship, such as the cost of travel, trying to get to work, the stereotypes that we face. And we felt like MPs kind of needed a little bit of teaching themselves about these things. Um, and we decided that we would be the kind of people to do that. So we set up the Apprentice Voice literally a week after meeting each other um, and started working on our first survey, which we released in October 2019. So that survey looked at four things. So the cost of travel, 20% off the job training, stereotypes and social opportunities. Um, and the results were actually quite damning and we shared them as wide as we could. So. Um, we went to the Department for Education, we went to the Department for Transport and we shared it with every MP that was um, an MP at the time um, and we kind of spoke to anyone that would listen. We put it in press releases out and kind of got some wide media coverage um, and that's kind of what we've been doing for the last two years now. So trying to change those perceptions um, and working to, to hear from apprentices to find out what the problems are. Um, going forwards, we're kind of looking to change how we work. So we feel like although it's great talking to MPs and showing them the problems that apprentices kind of face we want to change that and we don't want to just talk about the problems that we face um, so going forwards we're actually going to look to work with employers um, so over the next few months we're going to be building a program up where we can work with employers directly to actually make those changes so some of the things we're looking at are how can we implement mentoring into the workplace how can we get well-being support into the workplace how can we make sure that there's always opportunities for skills development. Um, so we've actually got a new survey that's just been released. Um, and if you go onto our LinkedIn or our Twitter account, you'll be able to find that. Um, so our accounts are The Apprentice Voice or Apprentice Voice on Twitter, or you can head over to our website, which is theapprenticevoice.com. Um, and on there, you'll find the links to the survey. Um, and that one is all on mentoring, wellbeing and skills development. Um, and one thing that we've been working on over the last few uh, kind of months is actually a framework for success. So we're looking at the things that apprentices say they need to really have a successful apprenticeship. So this is a lot further than the just the 20% off the job training and the day-to-day -day things that we expect as apprentices. This is very much looking at how we can actually create apprenticeships that are the best for everyone. So looking at things like mentoring and wellbeing support and how can we make sure that all large employers are offering that to apprentices. I say large employers just because solely for us it's easier to work with large employers that it impacts a lot more lives at once and then our hope for that is that actually what we get we have these survey results that say that apprentices want mentors we have results from employers that show that implementing these things such as mentoring are actually having positive impacts on the outcomes so we want to see kind of better productivity better well-being in the workplace better outcomes in general so better retention and we hope that these things as a whole 
will make it a lot easier for us to actually go to the government and say, look, why don't you look at implementing a mentoring program for all apprentices? And this isn't just about a, men a mentor for apprentices. It's also about how we can get apprentices to mentor younger people as well. So, I mean, I've known Anna for almost four years now. I met her on the beginning of my journey um, on my apprenticeship, and she has offered me some of the most brilliant opportunities um, throughout those four years. And I think that her program is absolutely sensational. Like It offers so many different insights for young people. And I think what we want to see is that built on, so offering that more one-to-one -one advice. So I think that it's brilliant that when young people go into a school and they talk about their apprenticeships, they can kind of influence young people to think about what they want to do. And I think now the follow-up approach is how can we make sure that those young people have somewhere to go? And I think that offering mentors is, is the way to do that. Um, so that's actually a programme that we've been looking into for a little while now. Um, and it's something that we would like to release in the future um, once we've set up kind of our, our programme with employers. So I feel like I've spoken for quite a lot now. Um, and I've, I don't know if anyone's got any questions, but do feel free to kind of put those in the, te in the text box um, and ask me about anything that you may kind of stumbled across. Um, I can talk about apprenticeships for, for hours, um, but I, I feel like I don't, I don't want to overdo my time. Thank you so much, Dex. So that was really inspiring and, and great to learn that, you know, you was at an event, you met Jill Keegan, you met Neve and Kate, and you came together from that event to actually create something so fantastic that, you know, it's great to see what you guys are doing. Um, and it's really important as that as apprentices, you are working, you know, to represent yourselves out there uh, and have managed to actually get to government level and influence some policy making at some point. So yeah, no, asking, how did you find university? Yes, I, I don't know if you mean how did I find the course or how am I finding it as in do I enjoy it? Um, how I found it was actually it was the I was the first cohort of digital marketing apprentices at level six. Um, and it was just from talking to a, another apprentice who was starting on that course. And she said, why don't you look into it? Um, and that's kind of how I found that. So I'm at London South Bank doing that. Um, and how do I find it? Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. So I think a lot of people talk about the experience um, and people kind of assume that we miss out on that as apprentices. Um, I've made some really close friends going to university. We were probably one of the sm smallest cohorts you'll ever see. So there's actually only six of us, which is, is a blessing in disguise in a way. So obviously it means that we meet a lot less people, but the relationships that we've formed are obviously a lot stronger. Um, and I feel that we kind of get that one to one teaching. So obviously as being only six of us, it's a lot more kind of intense and we can learn a lot more. We get a lot more interaction. And I know, I know you guys um, do your regular podcasts and stuff like that. And what sort of things have you got going on on your podcast at the moment that maybe people um, like Molly, who's probably looking to uh, go go into an apprenticeship? How can have you got any talks that you could? sort of pinpoint people to? Yeah, so we've got two series with 20 episodes of the Apprentice Talks podcast, which you can find on any major streaming platform. Um, and we've got talks with numerous different apprentices um, talking about their experience. I also run a podcast called Your Future Forward. Um, and this week we've been releasing the Apprentice Diaries, which again, very similar, is just kind of chats with apprentices. Um, so we've been talking to some apprentices at top organizations such as IBM, Sky, Santander, um, and they're talking about their their journey. Um, and one thing we're looking to launch after these this series is actually talking to the um, the people that run those schemes um, about how you can actually get into them um, and some of the top advice that they've got for candidates. I think that one thing a lot of people come to us with is the, the kind of they lack experience when they're they're looking for an apprenticeship. And I think this kind of is quite daunting to young people. But I think what you have to realise is that what these employers are looking for is that kind of positive attitude, enthusiasm, um, and, and just a general approach to, to wanting to learn. Um, they're not looking for years of experience, obviously. So I think that the one thing I'd say to people is, you are what they're looking for. Don't doubt yourself, um, because those employers know what a positive approach is. Um, and as long as you go in there positively and show them what you're all about as a person, they're gonna like that. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dexter. And I'm sure you'll be hanging around to have some one-to-one -one conversations with people in the networking room. Guys, I think that's enough for today. I think you all probably 
missed out on lunch so if you've missed out on lunch go grab yourself something to eat um there's plenty of people still around in the room so if you want to have a conversation have a conversation with people um i hope you enjoyed today's event again if you want more information about how to get involved with think fest with um the apprenticeship voice with any of the people that have spoken to us today please do drop me an email it is there in the chat um you know let's have a conversation let's see what we can do you know we want to raise the profile of apprenticeships we want people to see the benefits of apprenticeships and you know if you feel that there's more we can do drop us a note and we'll do our best thank you so much and thank you for all the love in the in the um i can see all the emojis popping up across the screen so thank you for everyone that that got involved really appreciate it and look forward to receiving any feedback if you thought i was a rubbish host please do tell me uh, i don't mind don't mind any negative feedback you know we're all here to to learn and grow um and yeah just thank you have a great weekend take care thanks kasim take care